you, you probably see me in this little imaginary landscape. I'm celebrating World Watercolor Month with a new video every day in July. First, we're going to talk about imaginary landscapes. And so we're kind of going to work in reverse because I'm going to show you some landscape paintings. We're going to talk about painting from the imagination, painting with exaggeration. So this is an imaginary landscape that I painted last week. And uh, I wanted to show you this to you because it's something that is informed by so many of my paintings. And you, you probably see me in this little imaginary landscape. Um, we've got that big tree, which is my first stroke was this big stroke of blue. And then I just drew a tree out from that big first stroke, um, which actually echoes um, the little birch tree demo that I did two weeks ago. You know, dry, uh, because we've got that focal tree and then everything else kind of supports it. I, this is not the first time I've done an imagination um, scene working with trees. Um, I found this one in a stack of paintings, um, working with some dark, dark, darks, um, thinking about that last fading light of sunset and wanting to get that expression of um, just that losing the light, losing the time of day, um, almost night, and uh, but a little abstracted too. And I kind of like this. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like, I like it. I can't really explain why. There's not a lot going on really technically, <laughs> but uh, it makes me happy. So I'm glad that I took that risk and tried to work with um, interesting extremes. And I wanted to say, as I look at this too, we've talked so much about value and contrast, but if we were to look at this, let me see if I can find my value finder. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the values here and see if this works. Um, this is a, my value finder. It's just a little red piece of plastic. And if we look at this, um, we can see that very strong dark shape. And then the sky looks to be our lightest value. But look at how it looks when we don't have <laughs> the value finder over top. We really have dark, dark values. This is a pure saturation of red, so it's not... Um, it's not really even close to white or pale gray or anything like that, but it still reads as our lightest value. We still have contrasts here. Um, I have the green value finder. Let's just experiment and give that a try too. And that changes how we look at the scene. The green value finder tends to draw out where your lightest values are. And so now we see our lightest values in contrast to our darkest values. So <laughs> really interesting. Um, hopefully using the value finder like that doesn't kill my camera because it's quite a dramatic change. Anyhow, um, so that was interesting to me. This is another um, imaginary landscape where I was really just playing with um, some very dark pigments. I think um, pimentite perhaps, um, which is a beautiful dark kind of burgundy brown. And then I just kind of saw trees. I always see trees. And then I kind of did some abstract circular shapes. This is using my imagination and just doing, really trying to listen to what do I feel like I want to do right now? If this doesn't have to look like any place on earth, if I get to imagine um, what the next, every next step is, um, what does that look like? And uh, I'm only as immediate as what is the next step. And because I was, I've been painting landscapes, I've been focused on landscapes for a number of years. Landscapes happen <laughs> when I'm imagining, um, but uh, I also get to have some freedom to, um, to be a little more whimsical. So I see a little hint of maybe cherry blossoms there. Um, I also, um, I don't know, there's a, there was a tree we had actually overseas that had little spiky tendrils that kind of curled out in the blossoms. So I'm kind of seeing that here as well. And it's just kind of interesting. Um, but I want you to have the give yourself permission to use not just your imagination, but your memory. So in this case, this is a memory painting. Um, we've had a lot of smoke and wildfires, uh, not near us so much, um, but there's been a lot of smoke drifting through our area um, with the wildfires in other parts of my province. And so I, um, the sun looks really different when the, when the, wild, when the smoke is uh, kind of making that haze. And so sunsets are different. Um, and I had a photograph that I'd taken 
um, of the sunset that was it, it had this kind of blue at the top and it was kind of hazy and then it faded down to yellow and, and pink and a, kind of a salmon-y color and I wanted to paint the trees that kind of framed it and it was the tops of the trees that I was looking at so there really wasn't a landscape per se just sky and tops of trees and so I created this curving shape um, around my sun and then I just kind of kept curving everything as I zipped through and uh, you know it, it the idea here was um, briefly glancing at the reference photo and then using what I remembered of the scene to give the feeling um, and and that's really what our memories do our memories hold on to feelings they shape what we saw um, so that we exaggerate maybe or accentuate how we felt and uh, so I like um, Pam's commenting, I love doing memory paintings. Me too. Um, it's interesting to see what your memory will bring out when you don't have a photograph to lean on. Um, and then finally, this was something I was playing with yesterday. And this is one of those more literal paintings from our recent um, outing on Sunday, actually. We were out uh, in the back country uh, exploring our region a little bit. And this was just a beginning of kind of painting that scene, those first impressions. So I like the idea of my first version being my first impressions, how this evolves um, as I paint it. Uh, I'll probably, I, I wanna add a little more detail to this. Um, it's just in progress right now. Uh, I wanna add more detail to it. I also feel like my colors are very exaggerated here. Um, there was, a, all of these colors existed in the photograph, but um, I think I need to figure out where the balance is so that uh, maybe some are diminished so that other areas can shine. And uh, so this first version gives that first impression uh, and then from there I get to refine my idea. Um, one thing I really want to work on with this is catching that feeling of distance. We were up on a mountain overlooking this valley. The landscape extended for quite a distance and I want to share that feeling in, in my painting. So that's where, where I'm at with um, working from photographs, imagination, and memory. I want all of those things to come together as I paint. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with more watercolor advice you can learn from. Don't forget to include the hashtag World Watercolor Month when you participate and post watercolor art in July.